last time I was on the show, I talked a lot about this, uh, um, the, the like kind of the cause of this war in Ukraine, and I put a lot of blame on American foreign policy, and I, uh, it went super viral, and I heard back from some people who disagreed. Um, but the, the funny thing about it is, is that it's not, like when I was talking about like NATO expansion and how much of a provocation this was to the Russians, when you were talking about like the good people in government, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's not like it's just kooks or, you know, crazy libertarians like me. It was not just like Ron Paul and, and Noam Chomsky and Pat Buchanan, like the outsiders who were all against NATO expansion. But the list of people within the government, within the national security apparatus, who completely opposed NATO expansion is really impressive and long. There's a lot of, like, really wise people within the government who were completely against NATO expansion in the 90s when it first started. Um, at least three secretaries of defense, uh, Robert McNamara, um, uh, Robert Gates, uh, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama's Secretary of Defense, William Perry, who was Bill Clinton's Secretary of Defense and, and the Secretary of Defense at the time, they all opposed it in, like, the strongest possible language and all explicitly for the reason that this will provoke a conflict with Russia. And they were like, uh, George Kennan, who was the founder of the containment strategy, the old-school Cold Warrior. There's this great interview he gave with uh, Thomas Friedman from the New York Times. You can find it online. And it's in the 90s when they're doing the first round of NATO expansion. And he is, like, furious. Like, his anger comes through the page when you're reading it. Because he's like, what are you guys doing? We won the Cold War. We won. And now you're picking a fight with Russia. And this isn't Vladimir Putin's Russia. This was Boris Yeltsin, you know? And he's like, this, these aren't the Soviets. These aren't the communists. These are the heroes who overthrew them. Why are we picking a fight with them? And he was a cold warrior. He was like, you're throwing away my life's work. And he said, and, and this was a really, you know, a, a crazy prediction, really ominous. He said, the people who are advocating expanding NATO are going to continue advocating expanding it and expanding it and expanding it. And then there will be a Russian reaction. And then when there's the Russian reaction, they're going to say, see, that's proof that we have to keep expanding it. And... Damn, if he wasn't right. If he wasn't right about that. And but, but, oh, but one more uh, little detail on this, because this is really interesting, is so there is uh, in 2008, in February of 2008, there was a private cable that the current uh, CIA head, uh, Burns, uh, Bill Burns, who's currently the head of the CIA, at the time he was the ambassador to Russia. And so he sent a private uh, message to Condoleezza Rice, who was the Secretary of State at the time. And this, the only reason we know about this is because of the heroic uh, Julian Assange dumped this. So this was not for the public. This is like what they were saying to each other. And this memo was titled, Nyet means Nyet. And it was about Ukrainian entry into NATO because this had been floated out for a while. Yeah, there you go. Uh, th <laughs> basically, the whole piece is this the current CIA director telling uh, telling Condoleezza Rice that this, and he's saying Let's, it in diplomatic read language. It, read it for yeah. So he says, Ukraine and Georgia's NATO aspirations not only touch a raw nerve in Russia, they, uh, they engender serious concerns about the consequences for stability in the region. Not only does Russia perceive encirclement and efforts to undermine Russia's influence in the region, but it also fears unpredictable and uncontrolled consequences, which would seriously affect Russian security interests. Experts tell us that Russia is particularly worried that the strong divisions in Ukraine over NATO membership, with much of the ethnic Russian community against membership could lead to a major split involving violence or at worst civil war in that eventuality russia would have to decide whether to intervene a decision russia does not want to have to face so this is now there's another memo that comes out later that year where he says and it's really it's a really interesting thing where he goes he said ukrainian entry into nato is the brightest of all red lines and Burns says to Condoleezza Rice, again, not to the American public, just to let the Secretary of State know, like, this is what I'm saying. He goes, I've spoken to everyone over here. He goes, from the craziest right-wingers to Putin's sharpest liberal critics, and it is unanimous to a man. They all agree that Ukrainian entry into NATO is the brightest of red lines, that this is a direct threat to Russia. You cannot do this. In the same way Jack Kennedy was saying you cannot put missiles in Cuba, you cannot bring Ukraine into your military alliance. 
that was Putin's position. Then this is what they were telling him. And three months after that memo that we were just reading, so this was in February, they had the Bucharest summit where NATO announced that Georgia and Ukraine were coming into NATO. And this is what's... St- it's like our ambassador to Russia told our secretary of state, do not do this. And then they went, we're just announcing that we're going to do it. And three months after that was the war in, in Georgia because they announced Georgia and Ukraine were coming in. And then Georgia got ballsy because they felt like they had the backing of the West and they attacked a breakaway province uh, south of Sessia. And they have Russian peacekeepers there. And Vladimir Putin responded. That was like the first like real response. And he went to war with Georgia over that. And then, uh, you know, like the stuff we talked about last time is when in 2014, um, when there was the coup backed by the West in Ukraine. You know, it's, what I like about these segments, too, is like people can argue with like this because I know there are people arguing with me. The last time I was here, if you remember, we played the video of Gideon Rose mm-hmm. uh, just bragging about this. And he was like, dude, I'm, it's not me. These are that's the CIA director's words. Yeah. That's Gideon. That's the editor of Foreign Affairs magazine saying this. Like this is what people in the government were saying. And uh, like one more note that I'll say is that Bill Clinton, Secretary of Defense, he wrote about this in 2015. So this is after the the coup in Ukraine, the Maidan Revolution, and after uh, Putin took Crimea. And he basically said that like this is all my fault. And that his biggest regret was that he didn't resign over NATO expansion. He said, I think he said his biggest regret was that he didn't, like, do everything he could to stop it and that he didn't ultimately resign over it because this was destined to be, like, the future. That it was like, you know, Mm. people will say, I know people will argue with me on this and they'll say, like, but, like, you know, NATO is just a defensive alliance, so why should Vladimir Putin care if... You know, we expand this defensive alliance. And it's like, yeah, it's a defensive alliance, except for all the times it's not. You know, except for all the times it fights aggressive wars, like in Serbia or Libya or Afghanistan. Other than that, I guess, they claim it's a defensive alliance. But from Vladimir Putin's perspective, this isn't a defensive voluntary alliance. This is the European wing of the American empire, the most war-hungry country in the world, who's started seven wars in the last 20 years and slaughtered millions of people. Like, from his perspective, when you put dual-use rocket launchers in Poland, that's not like, we're just trying, the, the official uh, uh, reason is, we're just trying to make sure that Iran can't nuke Europe with the nukes that they don't have. <laughs> but from Putin's perspective, he's like, no, you're trying to cut down on the time it would take for a nuclear weapon to hit Moscow. And so, like, again, it's not that Putin's a good guy, because he's not. And it's not that he's justified in invading uh, Ukraine, he's not, and all the stories of like horrible shit that he, you've heard that he's done there, he's probably done a lot of them. But, man, it's just that all these guys, these same dumb neocons who had this policy to remake the Middle East, they're the same ones who also had the policy to expand NATO all the way to Russia's border, and man, was just the, this just the dumbest, most reckless policy ever that's now put us in a position where we are closer to a risk of World War III and nuclear war than we've ever been in my life. And for what? For what? To make sure that the Donbass region is ruled by Kiev rather than Moscow? Like, is that really worth it? Jesus Christ.